I listen to him quite often. I, I just like his jokes. And so uh, <laughs> I listen to him quite often. I really do enjoy him. And for those of you that don't, it's, it's quite all right. It's all right. It'll be okay. Amen? And I said, well, he's going to tell a good joke this morning I can use in church. And I can't use it. It was about Texas. So I have to fix it. But I remembered one that he told, and I thought to myself, let's start church off with something funny, as he would say, and let's see what's happening. And so now I didn't come up with this. This is Joel Osteen's joke. Just remember that. Tell her, Mary, it's Joel's joke. Okay. All right, here it goes. There was this guy who had been married to this beautiful woman for 65 years. 65 years, and she passed. Oh, he was so brokenhearted. He just loved that woman. And she went on to heaven, and he was like, Oh, I just I miss her. I, want, I just can't live without her. i got to be with her. And so he just went to sleep, and whoosh, he just walked right out of his body, and boom, he's right in front of God. He said, Oh, God, I appreciate that. Where's my wife? He said, Oh, she's over here waiting on you. He says, well, I could tell you didn't want to be down there without her. And he said, no, sir, I did not, but I do have some questions while I'm here. And the Lord said, well, what is it? He said, I just got to know, why in the world did you make her look so good with that beautiful hair that was wavy and shiny? Even as a grandma, she was a knockout. And God said, oh, I did that so you would love her. He said, wow. Well, why in the world did you make her with such a hot body? I mean, even when she was a grandma, she's hotty. I can't believe how hot she was. Why would you do that? He said, oh, I did that so, she, so you would love her. He said, man. He said, well, why did you make her face so beautiful? She won so many contests. She was gorgeous. He said, I did that so that she, you would love her. And he said, well, then I got one major question. Why in the world did you make her so dumb? And he said, that's so that she would love you. <laughs> oh, well, praise the Lord. Amen. Church was good. God bless you. Have a good day. And may the Lord take a liking to you and keep his eyeball peeled out on you. Bye. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. A, a, a merry heart does you good like a medicine, doesn't it? I'm trying to get into the message. Believe it or not, this is part of it. It's just to encourage you. You know the confession sheets that we're always talking about I do hope you have them and you need to say them and you need to be getting into them because it covers fear worry material needs guidance wisdom healing anything that you can think of it personalizes a few scriptures for you and it helps you get it marked up in your Bible and squared away amen but God's word is so powerful that the older I get in the things of God it's gonna sound crazy to you but the older I get into the things of God the more I'm beginning to realize how I've lived an invisible life that makes everything in my life visible. And if you don't learn to live the invisible, you'll never enjoy the visible. Faith is about invisible. Faith is calling things that be not. How about that? So when you start calling something that's not, you already look like a nut to the world. The Bible makes it real clear that the world knoweth him not. It knoweth him not. When you know him, it's a whole different subject. I got tickled at Joel, matter of fact. He said, the Holy, he said, God spoke to my wife. And it got quiet for a second. I was on radio, so I couldn't see. And it was just on. He says, I don't mean outwardly. He said, I mean down in here. I'm assuming he was patting his belly. He said, I mean down here. And I thought to myself when I heard him say it. We've all said that so many times. But do you really realize it's really not what's around you, it's what's inside of you. It's what's going on inside your house that makes the difference. Isn't it funny, at your home, you can control what you watch on television, what happens at your table, what foods you cook, and you can create the atmosphere in your home that you want. You can. You shouldn't just be having some atmosphere and that's just the way it is and you've got to deal with it. You're in charge in your house. You decide the atmosphere.
She sets music of praise and worship to the point that when I walk in the room, the room's just, it's just full of energy. It's full of the anointing and the Holy Spirit. Words have been speaking all day in that room, the vibrations of the praises of God. Even with no people in there, those words and that music's going, I know the angels around are having a time. And when I walk into that room, the presence of that room overwhelms me. And it's the atmosphere that she created before I got home. And when people come to your house, they step into your atmosphere. And when they do, can they leave and go, I love going to their atmosphere. I hope so. Amen. Isn't the Lord good? Well, we've been talking about, I have, we've been talking about tongues and about the importance of it and a little bit on the gifts of the Spirit, which you'll move into. So today I'm going to teach a little bit on the reality of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, which I've given to you guys before. But I want you to go to John 16. And pull up John 16 and 7, and we're going to read from 7 through 15. And just so it'll be on the CD, if I don't get to it, some of my foundation scriptures is 1 John 4, 4, 1 Corinthians 6, 16, and verses 19 and 20. And uh, that's 1 Corinthians 6, 16, and also verses 19 and 20. And the reason I want to hit you with this more than anything is because of me talking about invisible you're going to see why it's so important to be God-inside-minded. Look at somebody and say, I'm God-inside-minded. Jesus was so God-inside-minded that when they asked him if they could see God, he said, you're looking at him. You want to read that so you won't have to hear it? Because when you hear it, you don't want to believe it. I don't know what that is, but for some reason, there's something about people have problems believing that Jesus is God. And I have no idea why, because God is the Redeemer. And he had a plan of redemption to set you free and to heal you and deliver you and to prosper you. And his whole plan cost him everything that he's got. He had to give his own self up. He gave his only begotten son, the only begotten of the Father, all of a sudden, God manifested flesh and then stepped in it and put that skin on around his spirit and walked in the earth in the name of Jesus Christ. A man without gall, hello, there was no filth found in his mouth. It was a man that walked with the anointing, with the power. Nothing ever happened in his whole ministry but good, and yet he was chased, beaten, he was criticized, he was, I mean, sought after everybody wanted to kill him except the people that wanted a healing. They was following him to get their healing. And then even the guard, when they were coming to get Jesus, Peter, when he grabbed Jesus' arm, Peter reached out and cut the guy's ear off. And that guy's ear hit the dirt and Jesus reached down and picked his ear up and stuck it back on his head and said, now Peter, don't you know what manner of spirit you up? Does a little correction and teaching right there. And that guard's standing there with his ear healed. And I know he's got to be thinking, let's don't crucify this guy. Do y'all see what he just did to my ear? Oh man, don't bother him. It would have been hard for me as a, one of those soldiers to continue to walk with him. I might have went AWOL. I'd have been like, I, I can't crucify this man. <laughs> oh no, he healed me. That's the God we serve. He is so awesome that he stands with his mouth closed doing you a favor. That while he's being scourged, beaten, and while he's being real acute and embarrassed, he's doing it and keeping his mouth shut for you. Just for you. Because if he opens his mouth and gives away what's happening, he's going to end up not being crucified. If he's not crucified by our sins, for our sins, then we have no redemption. And so him being like a sheep, dumb, couldn't open his mouth and speak, being led to a, sh a slaughter, opened not his mouth, and he kept the secret of the kingdom that's within you. That's the secret. The kingdom's in you. Christ in you. And he kept that quiet until after the resurrection. And when he rose from the dead, ever since then, it's been about Christ in you. Now, this might sound crazy to you. I'm not trying to say that I'm God himself. Some people take stuff like this that way. But I am so from God. I am so of God. I am so created in the likeness and the image of God that when my mind's renewed to the word and I speak to you the word of the Lord and you say, well, where's God? I could say what Jesus said. You're looking at him. Oh, no, I don't mean that I'm the creator and made the universe. 
but as the messenger and as the deliverer of the word and everything about it, I'm so in tune with him. If I'm in him and he's in me, what are we? We're one. Y'all look like you're struggling with this, but we'll get to it in just a minute and help you out a little bit. But becoming God inside minded. Can you pull up that scripture, John 16, 7, please? You're a good woman. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It's expedient for you that I go away. For you. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come. I guess we know why. The comforter was inside of him. And he was going to go away and send the comforter back and multiply. That was the secret of the kingdom. Held from the foundations of the world. Satan and all his cohorts did everything they could to find out who is this seed between, between the woman and, and this, this devil. Where's this seed that's coming to destroy this devil? Where is it? Who is it? So between the woman and all of the prophets, read the Bible and look at the prophets that were just slaughtered and murdered. And it's because they always thought that was the Messiah. That's what that scripture was talking about. And so every time something happens, and it's, it's usually a pretty mass murder is what I'd call it. I mean, when you make a decree to kill every male child age two and under because you heard the king had been born, I don't know about you guys, but... 2,000 years ago when the sun come up had the smell look and feel like a day like today. Technology might have been different, but they knock on your door to get your child under two, and it must be put to death to make sure of something. You know good and well it would be on. You'd be unlocking your safes, getting your firearms out. I hope you got some. And you're, you would defend your family. Can I get an amen? Sure you would. And that's the price that all these people have paid when they've come into the earth as a prophet, as a man of God, they're all considered to be the possible Christ. And the enemy was after every single one of them. Even Jezebel scared a great man of God to death. Oh, well, let me get into this. I just want you to understand when you receive the Holy Spirit, you have not received it. I say that a lot. Look at somebody and say, we have not received it. The Holy Spirit is Him. And you don't want to go around with the understanding that you're looking for it and you've received it and it will make a difference in your life. There's a big... See, it's the understanding of the Word of it. And it's Him. The Holy Spirit Himself will come to you. He will comfort you. He will guide you. He will lead you into all truth. We live in a world that everybody's living visual. We just went through... We're constantly seeing stuff about race with the police, with uh, fighting, uh, just things that happen. And when you watch the TV, it almost looks like there's a black and white war coming. Well, the world actually lives in that. They thrive on that. That's, they get up and get the newspaper and they're looking for it. They turn the news on and they're looking for it. They're looking, looking. To hear. And the rest of us are interceding about it. And we're praying for them. And thank God for churches like the Shield. We are one holy race. We're not a bunch of different colored people. We are the people of God. And regardless of what color your house is painted and what your shutters look like on your windows, it's what's on the inside of that house that only matters to God, not the outside of it. Amen. And it's the truth. And that's why I love the kingdom of God because I'm in the house of God. I see what the world's doing. They are having wars and fight and hate and mischief and disaster. They are burning stores and cars and doing crazy stuff. You don't see that in church. You don't see that where the Spirit of God is moving. That means our nation needs a revival. Amen? A revival. Can you imagine the people that hate each other so much when God comes in their heart, they love each other? They was, uh, I remember Billy Evans uh, when he got born again. A big old fella, always carries a pocket knife. Matter of fact, y'all don't know this, but he pulled it out on me one time. He didn't know me, and I didn't know him. I walked up to him and said, hey, man, how you doing? I was going to hug him. And he said, hey, hey don't, you don't touch me like that. I, and I, I said, I'm just going to give you a hug. I don't hug. I cut. And I said, man, this boy's he's a trip. And uh, he was pretty hot. Had that knife out, swinging around, and he put that knife up and looking at me. He said, don't mess with me. I thought, that boy needs to get saved. Thank God he did. <laughs> but, oh, Lord, I was going to tell you something about Billy. Let me move on. 
<clears throat> I'll get totally off subject. But you haven't just received a you haven't just received a blessing, and you haven't just received the it. You've received the third person of the Godhead. And he has come to live and move in a body that he created for his own self. And he made you in his likeness and in his image. So when he got inside you, it wasn't going to be hard to understand who you are. Because God in you is going to come out of you in every situation. When bad things happen and you see it instead of agreeing with the bad and then, oh, it's just not going to get any better. And, and, you know, I mean, if there's a bad report, I'm sure I'm going to get it. Instead of talking like that, you put the word on it. By the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. I am what God says I am. And I can have what God says I can have. I can do what God said I can do. And it's not based on my abilities. It's not based on my race. And most of all, it's not based on my gender. It is based totally 100% on the word, the invisible, the word of God. And when we release that invisible word of God, that which is invisible starts affecting the visible. Even, I mean, if we can understand it in technology, why can't we understand it just in our minds? In technology, your brain vibrates when you think, well, they can attach electrodes to your head and picks up the vibrations of what you think. And now they can look at a meter and watch the readings and determine if your brain is functioning or not. They call it brain dead. Most of you are familiar with it. You have relatives. So anyway, moving on with the subject. It's called brain dead. You don't know you brain dead unless they put you on the machine. But it's so interesting to me that they can do that to you. Are y'all all right? Brain dead got you, didn't you? I know what you all think, and I know somebody like that. Well, we're going to lay hands on them brains and do some brainwashing and get them dirty brains cleaned up. Can I get an amen? Praise the Lord. So, everybody's got the we have not received it down. You've been filled with a baptism. You've been filled with him. Not it. Not just a blessing. Have you received your blessing? I received him. How big of a blessing is that? I'm here to tell you. Amen. All right, now, why? Why have we received him? And if you would pull up Luke chapter 4, verses 18 and 19 for me, please, ma'am. I'm telling you, that Debbie's something, isn't she? That was y'all's chance to make her feel good. Boy, that Debbie is something, isn't it? Oh, I'm telling you. Oh. Well, you're not going to get a, uh, another first chance for a first impression. That was it. Sorry, Deb. You did good. That's my girl. All right. Here's why. This is exactly what Jesus said when he opened up the scriptures. This is his first sermon that I know of. And so he goes into church and he opens up the scriptures and he reads, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Now listen, if the Spirit of the Lord's on him, he's on you. Because everything that's in him, if he's in you, it's with him, in you. Oh, we're going to get into stuff. How much time we got? Oh, we can do this. This will be good. And he says, Because he hath anointed me, to preach the gospel, which is good news. It means healthy news. To preach the gospel, the good news to the poor. It's not just the poor only. So I've got good news for poor people. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. That's not just poor, believe me. There's a lot of wealthy people brokenhearted. To preach deliverance to the captives and the recovering of sight so we can see again. Not just the natural, but also in the spirit, because we walk by faith and not by sight. And then he says, to set at liberty them that are bruised. I, I mean, just stop and look at the why we have the baptism. To give good news. I love this. To heal the brokenhearted. To preach deliverance to captives. To recover the sight of the blind. To set at liberty them that are bruised. We receive him to give him a way not to have a blessing. Not the buck and jerk. Not the speak in tongues. But so that the gifts of the Spirit can flow through us and into the lives of others. You guys, I'm sure you're watching. Hello, Bob up in Michigan. Uh, he's getting a group together. And they're starting to meet in Michigan. And having a little shield of faith up there by satellite. 
So God bless you. I enjoy pastoring y'all from a thousand miles. It's so much fun because you know I just can't hop in my car and come see you. No, I love it. And this has got me fired up. But let me tell you what happened to Bob. Y'all remember Bob the Angel? He came one Sunday. My best friend's buddy, a neighbor down the street that we never knew was there. And then when I went to visit Randy Shesto, there was Bob. Kathy met him. And that was the beginning of a great relationship. Well, several Sundays ago when I was teaching on tongues, and I said, everybody begin. Come on. Everybody pray. Well, the power of God just hit him. And for his first time in his life, he just broke out in tongues. And he and his wife have been having a good time. They're remodeling their house. They just got married. He's all fired up. I think he's 73, two, somewhere. He's almost 70. And he's just going for it. He's my kind of man. And I, I'm just telling you something. He, he so fired up that when church was over, the phone was ringing. And you've got to tell us what happened. I just hadn't had a chance to tell you guys. I don't know what's happening everywhere else. But just think, we, don't, we couldn't see it. We didn't hear it. We didn't know anything about it. But the cameras caught it, sent it to Michigan. And Bob in Michigan sitting and listening. He gets filled with the Spirit, starts speaking in tongues. Now a whole new world's going to open up to him. Because when that happens to you, the revelation knowledge of the Word starts coming alive. And it starts coming out of the pages and leaping on you. That's why the devil wants you to believe tongues is of the devil. If I was a demon, I'd want all of you to believe tongues is of the devil. It is speaking mysteries to God that not any devil, even yourself, is not sure of. The Bible says you can pray for the interpretation. The Bible says ask the Father for the interpretation. But when you're interceding and you're praying, that's the Holy Spirit and your spirit combined together saying something into the heavens that only God is getting the fullness of it because the spirit never sleeps. The spirit never slumbers. It's always there ready to move. He's always ready to move. Always. Are you all right? Oh, I'm loving this. And so the spirit of the Lord being upon me, the spirit of the Lord's upon you to do the same thing. This isn't for Jesus. This is for the body of Christ. It's for, from Jesus all the way until the second return. Can I get an Amen. The anointing is on me to preach. I love it. When I preach, I release the invisible. When I release the invisible, it touches the visible. It heals the sick. It heals the bruised. It touches the brokenhearted and restores them. Preaching, decreeing, saying things that are... Po Yet what if people preach like they talk? I mean, you know, I'll tell you right now, if it wasn't bad luck, it wouldn't have none. How'd you like to have a preacher to get up and just tell you, well, most likely all of you are going to hell. I mean, most likely, I probably are. It, man, that's ridiculous. It's the Word that sets you free. It's the Word that encourages you. And don't get mad at me, but we need to be praying for our brothers and sisters that go around being hard on people. God's not hard on people. Going around and telling people, you smoke, you're going to hell. You, be, you, you do what? You better trim that off. You did what? You, got that. you better not do that. You can't eat that. You can't dress like that. You can't drink that. You can't smoke that. You can't. And we just stay on them. And they think, well, now what have I got to do to please God? All right, I'll give up my cigarettes. I'll give up my alcohol. I'll give up my drugs. Man, I don't know how much more I can take. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give up. Misery, sickness, disease, and poverty. <laughs> this is hurting me, man. I'm going to give up. You see where I'm coming from? Lord, have mercy. We have been so blessed. We have good news, not bad news. That's right, Jeff. Good news. Anytime it's bad news, I promise you, it's not gospel. The word gospel means good. And if it's not good, it's not gospel. That's how I know when the gospel is being preached. When it's good. Because God is good. Jesus said they wasn't but one good. Oh my goodness, I'm getting pumped up here. Lord have mercy. I might just go ahead and get ahead of myself just for the heck of it. But let's go to Mark 16. I'm going to read five verses as quick as I can and believe that you'll get the revelation of it. Now, I do understand if you're Methodist and some others or if you have one of the older King James, that may not be in your Bible. They had, uh, I think, chapters... 15 and 16 taken out. Well, they didn't like 16 for sure, so they've had it removed. It's too scary. Y'all do know that, right? Okay. You can go back. Not knocking Methodist. My wife's Methodist. 
Lord have mercy. I'm a Baptist and she's a Methodist. It's just taken me a long time to straighten her out. <laughs> Debbie, are you going to pull the scripture up? Thank you. <sighs> Where's Art? All right. He said unto them, go. Now, I know everybody likes the word ye because it just doesn't sound like you. <laughs> go ye sounds like somebody else go, doesn't it? Not me. Not me, but ye. All right. And he said to them, go you into all the world and preach. That's decree and declare. Good news to every creature. Oh, that would be a good one. You know how we think about lives matter and somebody will say all lives matter? That's a good one right there. Every creature matters. Because it says go and preach to every creature. Amen? So I'm preaching to the creatures. Hallelujah. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. That word saved is sozo. It means healed, delivered, protected, preserved, and made completely and totally whole. Spirit, soul, and body. That word saved, S-O-Z-O, in the Greek, that's what that word means. And is baptized and shall be healed, delivered, protected, made completely, totally whole. But he that believe not shall be damned. Now people read that and think God's being mean to them and saying that he's going to damn you. That's not what he said. He is saying that not believing causes you to be damned. He's not trying to cuss. You know what the word damage is. Damage. It damages your life. When you don't have the word, damage comes in. When you have the word and damage tries to come in your life, the word is there to ward it off. And if something does break or gets crushed, it'll be replaced with a whole lot better and more. Ask Job, hello, who went through Bible scholars believe about nine months of some serious boils and sickness. Had his friends try to get him to do wrong. His wife told him to cuss God and die. And you know something? That's the first book of the Bible is the book of Job. So he didn't have any scripture to run to and read. He didn't have the book of Psalms. He couldn't say by his stripes. He didn't know anything. He was learning God himself. And as he's learning God himself, he had enough wisdom to know. He says, you know something? If he slayed me, I'd still trust him. There, there's something about God that if he was going to slay me, it'd be so awesomely good. That's what he was saying. That even in that, I would just trust him. Hello? He, the psalmist said, if I make my bed in hell, he'll be right there with me. I've heard people went, man, I got up this morning and I was in hell. And I thought and God was right there, wasn't he? Right there. Hadn't you ever woke up and had a bad day? You ever went to a doctor and got a bad report? I mean, bad report. How your mind is affected and how you think. My wife and I talk about this quite often, about the importance of what you think what you meditate on. And we know when each one of us has heard something that can compound our life a little bit. So instead of letting the other one be alone for a long time to think thoughts that might be rough, we just kind of rub on each other a little bit like an old coning stone and a knife and keep the blade sharp. And we just talk about it, even though it's stuff we already know. We say things that we're not learning anything new. We're repeating what we know. And we'll just look at each other. We did it yesterday. And we started talking about how important it is to think thoughts that are pure and good and lovely and honest. And whoo, we got into that and we started having a good time. And we got to talking about when you think thoughts that are not good and pure and lovely, thoughts attract. The word thought means magnet. It means the power to draw out. When you think something, there's a magnetic force goes off when your brain cells move. And it goes into the universe and it starts seeking what you're thinking to bring it into your atmosphere. Now, thoughts will bring your stuff in the atmosphere, but words create it. Words create. Thoughts attract. Words create. You think on something long enough, it'll manifest. It will manifest. Thoughts are very powerful. Oh, I wish I could remember his name. The guy that was a prisoner of war in Vietnam for six years... And uh, when he got out, he went to play golf. Can't think of his name, but I mean, he like wore him out. And they could not believe how much he had improved 
the time that he had been a prisoner of war. And they asked him, where did you learn to make shots like that? How did you do that? You, you've been locked up for years. How did you do that? He said this. He said, every night when I would lay down, I loved golf so much, I would ask God to let me have a golf game. And I would close my eyes and I'd start at hole one and I would play with a group of guys all the way through. And he said, I watched my shots, I played my shots, and I did it for six years to the point that when I got out, I went and practiced what I had been thinking and meditating on and identically copied and exercised in my thoughts what I was seeing when I was thinking about it. So don't tell me thoughts aren't powerful. If a man's golf game can improve to the point that it gets everybody's attention when he's been locked up and they want to know, how would you do that? And he said, I just constantly thought about it. What y'all just saw me do, I've been doing this in my mind for six years every day. Hello. That's a couple of thousand days. Once three years is about a thousand. Isn't that right? So every three years about a thousand days. How many thousand days old are y'all? Oh, well, let's move on. I'm starting to get into another subject down now. Okay, I can tell right now we're doing something here. But becoming aware that the greater one lives and dwells inside of you is going to be something else. Let me move to something else here too. Let's go into John 14. Because recognizing that he's there is, is a very, very important part of your life. He's always going to abide with you forever. And he said he would give you another comforter. Can I get an amen? All right. He that believeth and is baptized. Oh, that, come on, Deb. Bring that thing back up to me. Where are you at? I'm telling you, she doesn't have but two speeds. If y'all don't like this one. <laughs> I'm sorry, Deb. I'm just picking on you. Are you all right? Do I need to use my Bible? Oh, is it Bailey? Ooh. Ooh, I'm in trouble now. Ooh. I tell you what, I'll just use my Bible if you can't do it. I thought you was Deb. I'm sorry, Bailey. You look just like Miss Deb. I wouldn't have been giving you that hard a time if I'd known it was you. I only do that because I have to pay her. <laughs> you guys are not right. John 14. Yes, ma'am. And then he says, I'm going to just start in verse 6. Jesus said to him, I'm the way. Now really, I want y'all to listen to this like you've never listened to it before. I believe something's going to hit you. I am the way, I am the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. And he is the Father. If you had known me, I didn't say this, I'm reading it, and I know it's Jesus because it's red. Are y'all all right? That's the blood. If you had known me, if you had known me, then you should have known my daddy. If you know me, you know my pa. He says, and from henceforth, you know him, the father. From here on, he's saying through me, if you will, through Jesus Christ, he's going, you're going to know the father. Now watch this. Well, Philip said, after Jesus just told him, I am the Father, Philip said, Lord, show us the Father. It's suffice I, I know Jesus had to feel just like most pastors do today in a counseling session. You know? It, you just don't understand what we go through in counseling sessions. You have no idea. When people look at you and say, by the way, before we get started, I just want you to know I don't tell God everything. When I pray, I, I don't want him to know. I'm like, oh, all right, I won't tell. Anyway. I, <laughs> mm. But if he asks me now, I'm going to have to tell him the truth. He says, have I been so long a time with you? This is in verse 9. Yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen Underline it. The Father. 
How sayest thou then? Show us the Father. Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? They don't even realize he's going, I'm God incarnated in flesh. The words that I speak, I love this, unto you. I speak not of myself. Remember the words he speaks are what? Spirit and life. And he says, and I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwells in me. He doeth the works. That's where we miss it. We think, we think that Jesus is just doing it all as a man. And the truth is the Spirit of God is doing it in the man Christ Jesus. Because the God part is spirit and the man part is flesh. He that has seen me have seen the Father. And how saith then, show us the Father. And then in 10 he said, Believest thou not that I'm in the Father and the Father in me? The words I speak to you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwells in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, the Father's in me, or else, if there's no other way, would you just believe it for very work's sake? He's going, man, can you just not believe this? And still to this day, people will tell you, no, no, now Jesus isn't God. He's son of God, but he's not God. Well, he's also son of man. He's called son of man because he's born of a woman. He's called son of God because God's his father. He has different titles and different names. When you get into the names of God, it's like it never ends. All right. And then he says, Believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or believe me for the very work's sake. Verily, verily, I say to you, He that believes on me, that's believing on the Father, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go to the Father. This is the mystery of the kingdom. It's Christ in you. This is what Satan never saw coming. This was his nuke. I mean, this really, it was. This was his nuke. And he says, And whatsoever you shall ask in my name. He's talking about the name of the Father, Jesus. That will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. All of you are sons of God. The Father lives in you. When you do the word, you glorify your Father. That is in you. And if you are in him and he is in you and Christ in you and Christ in him, then Jesus said himself that we three are one. So when you're baptized, filled with the spirit, anointed with the word, every demonic force that exists around you cannot discern the difference between God or not God. It doesn't know. Because when you release the word, it's all God. And every demonic force bows its knee to the word, to the name of Jesus. Nothing in the Bible does it tells you that makes the enemy drop to his knees by some physical force. You can't shoot the devil. You can't slap him. You can't cause some kind of combat backfire on him. It's not going to happen. It happens on the inside. Bishop Jakes was so right on when he said, the biggest enemy is in a me. And it is. That's your biggest enemy. It's not the devil. As a matter of fact, Galatians chapter 5, I got to quit. Galatians chapter 5, read that chapter. It'll tell you exactly what the works of the flesh are. It'll say, and this is works of the flesh. And that's what we call the devil. All of that's the devil. You don't need no devil. You do that without one. Y'all think I'm being funny, but demonic activity isn't as going on as much as people. That's just people. It's living in an ungodly nature. You don't, you don't need a demon to blame something on when you get ticked off and act wrong. Why you, the devil made me do it. Oh, yeah. Oh, well. All right. Praise the Lord. I got to quit and come back and finish later. I got plenty of notes, so I got plenty to say. And we're just going to keep on going, and we're going to have a good time. Are you all right? I don't know if you learned anything today or not, but I know one thing. I had a good time talking to you. Glory to God. Let's stand up and give Jesus Christ a big old praise God. Worthy is the most high. We love you, Lord. We exalt your name. And we thank you for your love, your mercy, your healing. We thank you for all of the abundance of goodness that you do. And we love you.
Oh, just so y'all can rejoice too. I won't say who it was because they don't want nobody to tell. But you know on the chariot offering, you can stay out. Stay out. On that chariot offering, we had somebody from out of town that just loves the ministry and loves Wendell and Deb. And they sent a $5,000 gift on that chariot to help out with the new chariot. And I thought, Lord, have mercy. Isn't that something? And that we're so excited about that. Now I see the scripture rejoice with another's blessings. When somebody else gets blessed, it tickles the fire out of me. I don't get mad. I'm happy for you. Matter of fact, I want to be a part of you being blessed. Amen. Well, Father, we thank you so much for the power of your word, and we decree that Jesus Christ is Lord of all, the God of all, and lives in us all. And Father God, we just thank you so much for your love and your anointing. I thank you for the power to witness, the power to go out and lay hands on the sick, the power to do the word all week long, Lord. And we thank you that we're going to carry church out of these doors and spread it all over the world. And we give you praise, glory, and honor and everybody said amen and amen God bless you if you need prayer for anything come on down we lay hands on you but y'all go do the word